I want to also talk about emphasizing apprenticeship over schooling or school models of developing workers and leaders. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, most of us have attended schools, formal schools where you go in the morning and you have a teacher that stands up in front and communicates information and you may have assignments and exercises and then you go home. And uh, this goes all the way up through perhaps university, sort of this basic sort of school model. And the school model works pretty much on this kind of basis. There's a lot of abstract knowledge and theory that gets communicated. It's primary verbal communication. Uh, you have sort of an expert that knows their subject and is going to be the teacher, that source of knowledge. And the learners are largely kind of passive. They're listening. Hopefully they're taking notes and they're thinking along. Uh, and you may have discussion, but it's largely the learner is receiving information or thinking about reflecting on the information. And it happens largely in a classroom that is not the place where I'm going to apply that knowledge. It's, it's separated. It's, it's an isolated, separate from practice context. Relationships in a school setting are sometimes competitive. Who's going to get the best grade? Who does best on the exams? That can happen. Evaluation of your learning is usually done through some kind of a, an examination of abstract knowledge. In other words, can you tell me back the theory or the knowledge that I communicated to you? And so the appropriate application, I'm speaking rather negatively about school, but, there, but school form is an appropriate application of learning for the transfer of basic information. It's pretty hard to learn nuclear physics just by going out and experimenting, isn't it? You're going to have to have somebody communicate that theory to you. So transfer of basic information or unfamiliar concepts to many learners where there's few teachers available or where learning needs to be standardized. Of course, now, what we're doing right now in this room is very much school-style learning. I'm sort of the expert. I'm largely verbally communicating to you. You're largely passive or thinking about it. You may have some questions. Uh, we're in a classroom. We're not in a local church where I'm going to say, now we'll go out the door and you're going to preach that sermon or something like that. But uh, to reach a lot of people, it's pretty efficient. And especially, say, with the video recording, who knows how many hundreds or more people, thousands, who knows how many people will receive this information. And so in terms of communicating information to larger numbers of people and through a qualified experts, the school system is fine. The problem is it's usually better for more communication of theory. Um, now, if I'm going to uh, be a chemist, I need to know a lot of theory. So it's appropriate to give the, the theory for that. And so some people who are in high levels of spiritual leadership, they're going to be teaching the Bible. They need a fairly high level of theory about theology and maybe even the original languages and culture and various other uh, aspects of ministry, counseling theories and so on. So communication of theory is not a bad thing. But the application from school to reality is a question. Now, the apprenticeship model works very differently. The apprenticeship model is really focused not so much on theory and knowledge as on practical skills and abilities. So whereas the chemist is really zeroing in on a lot of theory, now later on he may invent a new uh, glue that will be the strongest glue that was ever invented, uh, but he needs that theory. The apprenticeship is usually focused more on a practical skill. Let's say automobile mechanics. I want to learn how to repair cars. Well, that's more of a practical skill. You do need some theory for that, and especially nowadays cars are getting more complicated all the time. But it's largely a practical skill where you need an ability. And so the method is usually less verbal. You're probably not going to sit in a classroom for four years you're going to be in a garage with a wrench in your hand. Uh, you're going to be on location. You're going to be probably in the beginning phase, you're going to be observing 
the way that mechanic, a, a skilled master mechanic, is repairing a car. And you watch them and you, you see them on the job, so to speak. And so that teacher is less of sort of the expert knowledge person, rather a mentor or a model who sort of shows you how to do it. And so the learner is much more active because eventually that uh, teacher, the, the mentor, is going to say, now you take the wrench and you do it. You've seen me do it, now, now it's your turn, you fix the car, right? And we're not going to sit in a classroom, you're in the garage, there's a real car there, right? And when you're done, either the motor runs or it doesn't. You see, the evaluation is not by taking an exam, I know how to use a wrench. The, exa the evaluation is the car runs at the end of the day, it runs better at the end of the day, right? You fixed what was wrong. It's very practical in that regard. And so uh, even your relationships, you're in the working place, it's going to be much more collegial, um, it's not as competitive, it's more cooperative. And so we're talking about that it's appropriate for the development of practical skills where practical experience under the direction of an experienced mentor is possible. See, in order to do that, you do have to have that experienced auto mechanic to show you kind of how to do it. I mean, you can kind of experiment, but it's always going to be better if you have somebody who can show you the tricks and the best way to do it. Um, so, two different approaches to learning, and they're both legitimate for certain learning goals. And so here's the question. Which one of these two models is going to best fit training workers in a local church? And I think the answer is pretty obvious. It's going to be primarily the apprenticeship model. Now, we will have Bible teaching, which may take more of a school-type model. But if we're talking about really developing people with skills to do ministry, we need to be focusing more on an apprentice type of model. Now, because most pastors, or many pastors, were trained in a school model, in a Bible school or a seminary, their assumption is, well, if I just do that in my church, that's the best way to do it but it's not. And so just as I need to have different approaches to training somebody to be a chemist versus somebody to be an auto mechanic, we need to have different training approaches even in the church, whether I want to train a worker in a practical skill of, say, how to lead a children's uh, hour, or maybe in a more theoretical ability to interpret difficult passages of the Bible. See what I mean? So we've tended to neglect in the church these more apprenticeship type models often, but that's where the reproduction is going to be easiest because anybody can model what they're doing to somebody else. TBS Seminary is a nonprofit project. Our joint effort will bring about the common purpose of making Christian education available around the world and developing good Christian servant leaders. You have a unique opportunity to partner in this effort through your prayer and or financial support of TVS Ministry. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com.